In today's wrap-up, a survey has listed which nationalities Armenians consider the most appropriate for marriage. A second motion to have Mikhail Minasyan, the son-in-law of the former president, arrested has been rejected. And 330 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed. A recent survey by the Caucasus Research Resource Centre called the Caucasus Barometer has listed which ethnicities and groups Armenians consider the most appropriate for marriage. 98% approve of marriage with an Armenian. In second place came marriage with Russians, with 45% approval and 54% disapproval. Russians were followed by Italians with 40% approval and 58% disapproval. Scoring between 30 and 40% approval came Americans, Ukrainians and Georgians. Azerbaijanis ranked last with only 4% approving of a marriage match. Ranking slightly better than Azerbaijanis came Turks, Jehovah's Witnesses and Arabs. Between 13% to 22% approval came Iranians, Kurds, Yazidis, Indians, Russian Old Believers and Jews. A court in Yerevan has rejected a second motion to arrest Mikhail Minasyan, the son-in-law of former President Serge Sarkisyan. Minasyan had previously served as Armenia's ambassador to the Vatican and is also one of Armenia's most prominent media tycoons. Earlier, the Criminal Court of Appeal overturned a decision by the Court of First Instance to detain Mikhail Minasyan. Minasyan left Armenia shortly after the 2018 Armenian Revolution. Currently, Minasyan's whereabouts are unknown, but he has been releasing videos on his Facebook page calling the charges part of a campaign of political persecution on the part of the Pashinyan government. Mikhail Minasyan is facing charges of illegal enrichment, submitting false papers and legalizing property obtained through criminal means. Health authorities in Armenia have confirmed 330 new cases of COVID-19, raising the total number of cases to 28,936. 162 recoveries were also reported and 7 more deaths, raising the death toll to 491. In other news, after an outbreak occurred at a nursing home in the neighborhood of Nork in Yerevan, health authorities have confirmed that all the residents of the care home have recovered. Furthermore, young volunteers have set up booths around Armenia where they will be handing out free masks. I spoke to Anna Miriam Roccatello, the Deputy Executive Director of the International Center for Transitional Justice. Using her expertise and international perspective, Ms. Roccatello gave her take on the importance of transitional justice, the issues surrounding the Armenian Constitutional Court, and how to create a social contract for Armenian society. She also gave pointers on how Armenians can create a constitution that will result in the active participation of civil society and the youth. And finally, Civilnet released a profile story about Hiroki Tachiri, a Japanese man living in Yerevan. Hiroki is working on a number of endeavors in Armenia, such as promoting Armenia as a tourist destination for Japanese people, creating an affordable culture center, and helping Armenian startups. Hiroki has also released two books on Armenia, one in English and one in Japanese, with the Japanese version being one of the few books on the topic of Armenia available to Japanese audiences. But we also caught a glimpse of this Japanese expat's day-to-day -day life in the Armenian capital.